Yo, what is going on, Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and today we have another mock draft video coming at you guys. We are resuming the 10 team PPR mock draft series. Our last video on the 10 team PPR mock draft series was from the third pick, so now we are moving on to the fourth pick. Also, I appreciate all the support that I got from you guys yesterday. My videos absolutely blew up yesterday. I got a ton of positive feedback yesterday on all of these videos. So I appreciate all of you guys who watched my videos, left a like, commented. Just let me know how you guys liked my videos yesterday. I really appreciate it. I, I'm so happy that you guys are enjoying these videos and I'm super glad that my videos got out to more people than normal yesterday. So with that being said, let's get right into this mock draft. Let's see what kind of roster we can construct from the fourth overall pick here. So first Saquon goes, then Christian McCaffrey, then Dalvin Cook. This has been happening more than I expected it to. Saquon Barkley going ahead of Christian McCaffrey. Even though Sleeper has Christian McCaffrey as the 101 for their ADPs, it seems like Saquon's going ahead of Christian McCaffrey quite a bit. So I won't tell you to expect that to happen in your drafts, but be prepared for it to happen because it definitely could happen. I would say that'll probably happen in about 20% of mock drafts, I would assume. But it's our pick now, and it is clear, either Alvin Kamara or Ezekiel Elliott here. I'm not sure why Derrick Henry is higher than Kamara and Zeke right now. These rankings that sleeper.app gives us aren't actually rankings, they're ADPs from today, so I guess people are just drafting Derrick Henry earlier than they normally do, so that sort of explains it, but still, I don't know why anyone would be drafting Derrick Henry ahead of Kamara and Zeke, but that's not our problem. We're just going to talk about the two remaining players, but before I do that, let me just tell you guys, I am doing this mock draft on sleeper.app. I'm not sponsored by them, but I just really like doing my mock drafts on sleeper.app. If you want to check them out, link is in the description below. But now let's get back to the analysis. We have Kamara and Zeke. You can go either way here, but with a new coach in town in Dallas, you know, Mike McCarthy doesn't have the strongest history of using running backs to his advantage. Now, in Zeke's defense, Mike McCarthy has never had a running back as good as Zeke, so maybe he'll use Zeke properly. But there is a little bit of uncertainty there. Whereas with Kamara, the only uncertainty really is how much positive touchdown regression he's going to see. He did not have that many touchdowns last season. The number will go up. A lot of the targets went to Michael Thomas, so Kamara should get an even bigger workload than he saw last season. So I like Kamara here. If you want to go Zeke, feel free to do that. There is a good argument for Zeke, but I like Kamara here. He's just a little safer this season, in my opinion. Then Michael Thomas goes, followed by Devontae Adams, Derrick Henry, Zeke, Joe Mixon, Kenyon Drake, Josh Jacobs, Miles Sanders, DeAndre Hopkins, Nick Chubb, Tyree Kill, and Travis Kelsey. So first look at the running backs available, Austin Eckler, Aaron Jones, and then no one else. So I would take Austin Eckler or Aaron Jones ahead of the other guys. At wide receiver, we have Julio and Godwin. I have Godwin ahead of Julio. Julio was nearly outperformed by Calvin Ridley last season. Now, Ridley is a third-year wide receiver, which historically is when wide receivers have their biggest breakout season. So I think that there is a very good chance that Ridley actually outscores Julio Jones, which of course would mean that Julio Jones' production would be hindered at least slightly. So I'm not taking Julio Jones at his current ADP. And then at tight end, we have George Kittle. So this is really tough here. We have Eckler and we have Kittle. You can go either way here, because by the way, I like Eckler more than Aaron Jones. If you're going to use a second round pick, I think Eckler has almost the upside that Aaron Jones has with a much safer floor. Aaron Jones is touchdown dependent, and I think it's dumb for people to say that, oh, well, he just got lucky in the red zone last season, because no, he didn't really. He's very good in the red zone. But nonetheless, that doesn't take away from the fact that he is touchdown dependent and if this offense were to struggle a little bit, his production would be hindered at least slightly. So I'm going with Austin Eckler here. You could go with George Kittle if you want, but you just have to stack up on running backs early. And 
I don't know if I'll see Eckler or Aaron Jones with my next pick if I don't take them. And even CEH might not be there, who would be my third option. So I'm going with Austin Eckler here. I need a running back, and I don't need George Kittle, although he definitely is a luxury. Then we see Aaron Jones go, followed by Julio Jones, Mahomes, Godwin, CEH, and Todd Gurley. So another reason why I took Austin Eckler ahead of George Kittle was because I knew that Austin Eckler would not be there, but George Kittle could be there. Now, I wasn't necessarily expecting it. I wasn't going to rely on it, but I thought there is a chance that that happens. And sure enough, George Kittle is there. At running back, there's no one who I like. At wide receiver, Kenny Galladay, not worth it. But I will say Lamar is available as well. If Mahomes was available and Kittle wasn't available, I would probably take Mahomes. And actually, even if it was Lamar, I'd probably even take Lamar ahead of anyone else if Kittle wasn't here. But with that being said, Kittle is available, so we're going to take him. He's a beast. In my opinion, he's the best tight end in the league. Not necessarily for fantasy, but just in real life, skill-wise, he is the best tight end in the league, in my opinion. And if Debo Samuel misses a few games or starts the season out very slowly, George Kittle just gets an even bigger workload. And he's so big and fast that it doesn't matter. You can double team him and it really doesn't matter because no one is as big and as fast as him. You have the linebackers who might be as big as him, but not as fast as him. And then you got the secondary who might be as fast as him, but they're not as big as him. So we're taking George Kittle. I love this start. Eckler, Kamara, and Kittle. Very well-rounded team that we have built so far. Then Lamar goes, followed by Galladay, Allen Robinson, Mike Evans, Fournette, James Conner, Thielen, Chris Carson, Juju, DJ Moore, Amari Cooper, and David Johnson. So let's first take a look at the running backs. We see Le'Veon Bell available, and I really, really like him. I target him and Chris Carson in the third round of every single mock draft of 12-team PPR mock drafts. So in a 10-team PPR mock draft, obviously he falls a little more than in a 12-team PPR mock draft. But still, I am quite surprised that he fell this far. He normally doesn't fall this far. He normally goes in the late third or early fourth round of 10-team PPR mock drafts. So I really like him there. We might take him. At wide receiver, we have OBJ, who I would rank lower than all of these other guys. Cooper Cup, Ridley, even A.J. Brown, Robert Woods. I'd take all of them ahead of Odell. I can definitely get one of these wide receivers with our next pick. No doubt about that. So we might not need to take a receiver here. And then at quarterback, Kyler Murray. But he's the highest ranked player available, but we're not going to take him because it's way too early. So now we have to decide. Do we want to take Le'Veon and then get a receiver with our next pick? Or do we want two wide receivers right now? Well, I'm completely fine with getting Robert Woods or Ridley with our next pick and then getting someone like McLaurin with our pick after that, with our sixth round pick. But I'm not fine with having David Montgomery. Well, I'm fine with having David Montgomery or Mark Ingram as our flex, but I would much prefer having Le'Veon Bell as our flex. So I'm going to take Le'Veon Bell here. I know everyone keeps saying he's on an Adam Gase offense. Why would you ever want a running back in an Adam Gase offense? Well, guess what? He was an RB2 last season. He was a top 20 running back last season in an Adam Gase offense. So I feel like that argument is a little flawed because if there was a season where Le'Veon Bell would have done awful, it would have been last season. Adam Gase didn't seem to like Le'Veon Bell last season, and it was his first season on the Jets. But he still finished as an RB2. Nothing is going to change this season except for that improved offensive line. So we'll take Le'Veon Bell with this pick. Then Cup goes, followed by Melvin Gordon, Jonathan Taylor, David Montgomery, Mark Andrews, and T.Y. Hilton. So it is now our pick, and we're obviously going to take a receiver. A lot of people would be stoked to have Odell here, but personally, I don't see the point in taking him ahead of Calvin Ridley. I feel like Ridley has just as much upside as Odell has with a much higher floor. And yes, Odell could be phenomenal. If this offense thrives and Baker 
actually looks decent, Odell could be great. But in my opinion, we know that the Falcons are going to be good. We know that Ridley's good. So there's no doubt that Ridley will at least do decent. But he could absolutely go off. He was outperforming Julio last season. So if people are taking Julio in the first and second round, Ridley could easily, easily return second round value. And you're getting him in the fifth round. I love Ridley. He's great. You can go with A.J. Brown if you want. I will say he probably has a little more upside, but he has much more risk. And in my opinion, in the fifth round, I'll take the slightly less upside with a much higher floor in Calvin Ridley. Then after we take him, Mark Ingram goes, followed by Robert Woods, Singletary, OBJ, A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, Zach Ertz, Keenan Allen, D.J. Shark, DeAndre Swift, Tyler Lockett, and Kareem Hunt. Let me just say, I am very surprised that McLaurin did not get taken. Originally, I thought he would be available, but then seeing all the receivers that went, I was like, well, McLaurin's going to go because for some reason, all the players who I like get taken one or two picks before my pick. But to my surprise, McLaurin is available. We'll probably take him, but we're just going to look around. Waller, we already have a tight end, so we don't need him. Cam Akers is available, and I really, really like him, but I am okay with Darius Geis or even James White as my fourth running back. At wide receiver, yes, I do like Devontae Parker, and I'd be fine with him as my wide receiver too. But the difference between McLaurin and Devontae Parker is so much bigger than Cam Akers and Darius Geis. Because in my opinion, McLaurin has legitimate top five wide receiver upside. Like if you told me that McLaurin will be a top five wide receiver, I wouldn't question it. I would say, yeah, I I could definitely see that happening. And he has a reasonable floor. Like, I don't see how he could finish as anything outside of, like, the top 25 wide receivers. Like, I feel like he has to be a wide receiver, too. And he has so much upside. He is definitely worth the pick. He is one of the guys who I target in literally every draft. So we're going with McLaurin there. Then Waller goes, followed by Kyler Murray, Raheem Mostert, Cam Akers, Cortland Sutton, and Russell Wilson. So let's take a look at this beautiful roster that we have constructed so far. Kamara, Eckler, Le'Veon Bell at running back. That is phenomenal. Kittle at tight end, one of the best there is. And then at wide receiver, Ridley and McLaurin is not bad at all. So I really like this. I would like in the next two rounds to get one more running back and a wide receiver. So looking at the running backs, we have Damian Williams, not a fan of him. We have James White, Ronald Jones, Geis, Dobbins, Coleman, and yeah, that's who I like. So I would like to risk it and wait until my next pick. So we'll think about doing that. But looking at wide receiver, we have Parker, and then we have Gallup, who Gallup, in my opinion, is probably the best wide receiver available. And I could probably get him with my next pick. So I don't really see a point in not waiting on him because if I take him, there is a chance that James White, Ronald Jones, Geis, Dobbins, and Coleman all go. But if I take one of those running backs, there's definitely higher than a 50% chance that Gallup is available. So we're going to go with the running back and looking at the running backs who we have, we have Kamara, Eckler, Le'Veon Bell. Like all these guys, they are great. So I don't necessarily need a super, super safe running back. So for me, it is between Ronald Jones, Geis, and Coleman. Because I already have three great running backs, so I don't need a safe player who I can rely on. Because I already have three running backs, and I know that they're going to be great. So I need a running back who could be really good and compete with Le'Veon Bell for my flex spot, or... I could always trade Darius Skice or Ronald Jones or Tevin Coleman if they break out. They can either actually start on my roster or I can trade them. So I like all three of these guys, but to be honest, there is actually a chance that Tevin Coleman is available with my next pick. I don't think it'll happen, but there is a chance that that happens. And there's not a chance that it happens with Geis or Ronald Jones. So I'll take either Ronald Jones or Geis. Personally, I'm going to go with Geis. We know that he's going to be great if he's on the field. 
it's just a matter of whether or not he's on the field. But I'm willing to take the risk. If he's on the field, he's going to be great. He's so talented, and he's very, very good. And this team knows how to use him. So we'll take him. Then Stefan Diggs goes, followed by Damian Williams, Deshaun Watson, Devontae Parker, Marquise Brown, Dak Prescott, A.J. Green, James White, Gronk, Ronald Jones, Jordan Howard, and Tevin Coleman. Now see, this is what I was talking about. This is more like it. Ronald Jones and Tevin Coleman go within three picks of my pick. That is what I'm talking about normally happens to me. The players who I like go right before my pick. But I see it running back J.K. Dobbins is there, and I love him. I don't want to stack up too many running backs, though. But looking at the receivers, there are three receivers ahead of Michael Gallup. It'd be very risky to not take Gallup and hope that he's available with our next pick. Looking at these other teams, there's a good mix. There's one team who's taken a ton of running backs, one team who's taken a good amount of receivers, and one team who's kind of in the middle. So now I do really, really want to be risky and take Dobbins and just hope that Michael Gallup is available. But you know what? I'm not going to risk it. I already have four receivers, excuse me, running backs. I already have four running backs who I love. I only have two receivers, so we're going to play it safe. We're going to go with Gallup. He's great. There are so many vacated targets in this offense. The Cowboys have the second most vacated targets going in to 2020. I don't care that CeeDee Lamb is on this offense now. Jason Witten and Randall Cobb both had 83 targets last season. They, had, they each had 83 targets on the dot, which I think is pretty cool. But there's no way that CeeDee Lamb takes all those targets, right? It's not going to happen. He can get 80 or 90 targets, and Michael Gallup will still get his fair share. So we'll go with Michael Gallup. Then Brandon Cooks goes, followed by Landry, Edelman, Evan Ingram, Keyshawn Vaughn, and Debo Samuel. So that means that our guy, J.K. Dobbins, is available. I'm going to be the first to say I am very surprised at how this draft has been going. Normally, the guys who I like always get taken before me. And yes, that happened last round with Tevin Coleman and Ronald Jones. But in general, we had the guys fall to us. Calvin Ridley fell to us. McLaurin fell to us. Now Dobbins fell to us. This doesn't normally happen. I'm super happy that it's happening now. I love Dobbins because he's a safe weekly option. You know he's going to get carries and touches. And we know that he's good. But if Mark Ingram goes down, J.K. Dobbins is instantly an RB2, possibly an RB1. So he's great for just a weekly safe floor, but he always has that upside to be really, really good. Now we will look at other positions, quarterback, no one worth, no one worth taking, tight end, no one worth taking. At wide receiver, I do like Tyler Boyd and Marvin Jones. So this is a little tough. We have Ridley, McLaurin, and Michael Gallup. Because we have those three players, I think we're gonna hold off on the wide receivers. I love Marvin Jones, but I think we're gonna test something out. We're gonna see what happens if you go running back heavy, not only in the early rounds, but also in the middle rounds, and don't draft a fourth wide receiver until at least the 10th round. We'll see how far this goes. So we're gonna test this out. We're gonna go J.K. Dobbins. Let's see what we can do with fading the wide receiver position for quite a bit of time. So then Tariq Cohen goes, followed by Higby, Hayden Hurst, Matt Ryan, Tom Brady, Tyler Boyd, Sony Michelle, Will Fuller, Matt Breida, Marlon Mack, Drew Brees, and Alexander Madison. So let's look at the wide receivers. Marvin Jones fell to us, so I didn't think he would, but he did, so I'm going to take him. I love Marvin Jones. He is so good. He was a wide receiver too last season. He was a high-end wide receiver too last season in points per game while Matt Stafford was there. Then Matt Stafford got injured and he still finished ahead of his ADP. Right now he's going as like the wide receiver 40. He finished as a top 30 wide receiver last season while missing three games and while having Matt Stafford for only half of a season. There is no way that Marvin Jones doesn't return value. He has a ton of upside and a super high floor as well. There's no way he doesn't return value, so I'm taking Marvin Jones. I love him. I don't want to risk not getting him with our next pick. Then Deontay Johnson went, followed by Carrion Johnson, CeeDee Lamb, 
Aaron Rodgers, Hunter Henry, and Darius Slayton. So Latavius Murray is available, who I really like because he's another guy that's very safe on a weekly basis. Like, you know he'll get touches, and he always has that potential to get a touchdown or two with a couple of catches. So he could always get that 15, 20 point week, but you always know that he'll get you at least a few points. But the real reason why I would draft him is because I have Kamara. And obviously, Murray is his handcuff. And I don't always like taking handcuffs unless there's a situation like this where Latavius Murray is the clear handcuff. And not only that, but he will produce a lot of fantasy points if Kamara goes down. So if I take Murray, I know that if Kamara goes down, it's not that big of a deal. Looking at wide receiver, we have Jamison Crowder, who I'm not a huge fan of, so we're not going to take a wide receiver. At quarterback, we still have Allen Wentz and Stafford, so I can wait a little longer on that. It's Latavius Murray here, no doubt about it. He's a handcuff, and realistically, I still could play him even with Kamara in my lineup as well. Then Josh Allen goes, followed by Wentz, Emmanuel Sanders, Bills defense, San Francisco defense, Jerry Judy, Zach Moss, Lindsey, Jared Cook, Stafford, Chase Edmonds, and McCole Hardman. So I know the three quarterbacks that I wanted all went in the last two rounds. That's unfortunate, but we still have Daniel Jones and Big Ben, who I'm fine with. I prefer Allen Wentz or Stafford, but Jones and Big Ben are okay as well. Looking at our roster, we have only one more bench spot, so that is going to go to a tight end. We always draft a backup tight end nowadays since there are such good tight ends in the late rounds. We have Noah Fant, who I really like. I'd prefer him over the other guys, but I am still okay with the other tight ends as well. At quarterback, let's see how the other teams are doing in relation to their quarterback. So one team has two quarterbacks, and then two teams have only one quarterback. So they could definitely draft Daniel Jones and Big Ben, but... The odds say that they would draft Cam Newton and Daniel Jones. So I'm going to be a little risky. I'm going to take Noah Fant here and just hope that Daniel Jones or Big Ben is available with our next pick. Antonio Gibson goes, followed by Baltimore defense, Jamison Crowder, Tony Pollard, Henry Ruggs, and Cam Newton. So luckily, we have gotten what we wanted. Big Ben is available. Daniel Jones is too. And if you want to take Daniel Jones, that's fine. But I prefer Big Ben because we've seen him be a very good fantasy quarterback for so long. Yes, Antonio Brown isn't there anymore, but still they have Juju, they have Deontay Johnson, and they have a good offense still, even though they weren't great last year. That was really just because of the awful quarterback play. Big Ben's going to do good in this offense, no doubts in my mind. So we will take Big Ben here. Then Pittsburgh defense goes, followed by Henderson, Christian Kirk, Boston Scott, Justin Jefferson, Duke Johnson, Chicago defense, Daniel Jones, Justin Tucker, New England defense, LA Chargers defense, Harrison Butker, and it is our pick now. So we just have a defense and a kicker to draft. Looking at the defenses, Vikings is definitely the best one available. They're going to run a slow-paced offense, and they have a great defense in general. So everything lines up for them to be a great fantasy defense. If you want to take almost any other defense, honestly, I couldn't really blame you because defenses are very subjective. You could make an argument for the Chargers defense, the Saints defense, any other defense really, and it would be a successful argument. But personally, I'll take the Minnesota Vikings defense because we've seen them be good for quite a while now. Then Zerline goes, followed by Lutz, Miami defense, San Gonzalez, Justin Jackson, and Kansas City defense. So now we're just taking a kicker, and Young Hoku is the guy here. He was great last season. Sure, on the Chargers, he looked bad, but on the Falcons, he looked great. This offense is a perfect offense that is very fast-paced, has a pretty bad defense, and just gets in a ton of shootouts. So give me Young Hoku. He's going to do great. He's going to put up a lot of fantasy points. Then Jalen Rieger goes, followed by Robbie Gould, Fairbairn, Baker Mayfield, Sterling Shepard, and Fairbath is the Mr. Irrelevant here. So before we end the video, let's look at our roster once again. At quarterback, Big Ben. Sure, he's not great at all. He's probably the worst starting quarterback of any fantasy team here, but he gets the job done, and he's really no worse than most other fantasy quarterbacks, other than the top few. 
Then we have Kamara and Austin Eckler, one of the best running back, if not the best running back duo in this fantasy draft. So I love that. Then you add in Ridley and McLaurin at our wide receiver positions. They are pretty solid. I'm completely fine with having Ridley and McLaurin as my wide receiver one and two. Then you add in George Kill as our tight end one. Obviously, that is phenomenal. And Le'Veon Bell, who should be an RB2, we have him at our flex. So that is phenomenal. Then Young Hoku in Minnesota Vikings defense. Kicker and defenses don't really matter, so I'm just going to ignore them. Then we have Darius Geis and J.K. Dobbins as our top two bench running backs. I think they're great, and realistically, you could get away with having Geis or Dobbins as your RB3, but we have them as our RB4 and 5, so that's great. Then we have Latavius Murray as a handcuff to Kamara, so that's a great pick. He can have standalone value even if Kamara is, is healthy, but if Kamara goes down, Latavius Murray will be very helpful for us. We have Noah Fant to back up Kittle in case Kittle goes down or for when he's on a bye. So I think Fant has a ton of potential. He has some risk as well, but he has potential for sure. Then for our wide receivers on the bench, we have Michael Gallup and Marvin Jones. I love them. They're great. I think they should all be wide receiver twos. Well, wide receiver twos in a 12-team league, so top 24 wide receivers. I think Michael Gallup and Marvin Jones are at least viable flex options every single week in a 10-team mock draft, and they're on our bench. So I think this is a great team. This bench is phenomenal, and the starting lineup is great too. The bench is definitely the best part of this team, but still, obviously the running backs are great. Our tight end is great, but my bench just stands out to me because I can always trade some of my bench players to improve my quarterback or something like that, and injuries are not going to affect this team very much because we have a handcuff for Kamara, and if any of our running backs or receivers go down, we have a great bench. So I really like this team. This is one of my favorite teams that I've drafted. I'm in between an A and an A plus here. If I had Stafford, Wentz, or Allen instead of Big Ben, it'd be an A plus. But with this, I would give this draft like in between an A and an A plus, but closer to an A plus. In my last mock draft, it was. I believe in between an A and an A+, plus, I gave it like an A and a half. This draft, I would give it really close to an A+, plus. not quite an A+, plus, but really, really close. I love this draft. I think this team is phenomenal. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please, in the description below, let me know what you would grade this team. I like this team a lot, but I want to hear what you guys have to think. If you don't like it so much, I'm going to hear your guys' feedback and maybe adjust my draft strategy. I'm giving you guys advice, but I would love to hear your feedback on what you would grade this draft because your feedback seriously does mean a ton. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to receive fantasy football content almost every single day. I put out between five to seven fantasy football videos every single week to make sure that you guys are prepared for your fantasy drafts and to make sure that you guys are prepared every single week during the season. If you guys enjoyed, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button because it seriously helps me out a ton. Like I said yesterday, my video started blowing up and a lot of it was because people were clicking that thumbs up button because it really helps get my videos out to more people. So if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate if you just click that thumbs up button because you know it's free and it just shows your support and it shows that you enjoyed this video and it really helps me out. So I would appreciate if you guys would do that if you enjoyed this video. I hope you guys had a great time watching this mock draft and I will see you guys next time. Peace.